Okay, whenever you feel like it. So we're here with Davida, uh, and we're going to make the typical two questions to learn a little bit about his, his very special life. Uh, so the first question, Davida, is uh, what was the riskiest decision you made in your life? Okay, so I think probably it would have to be when I decided to start college when I was nine. <laughs> um, and I, because I was nine, I didn't fully understand all of the risks, but I was told about them. Um, basically, I have taken a path through life that is very different than everyone around me. And that has certain consequences. Uh, you know, I, I haven't since then really had a peer group. I was homeschooled up until that point, and so I was at least in the same class, if you will, as other people who were homeschooled in my area. Um, and so we would all hang out and we were peers because we were being homeschooled. Um, but at that point, I really started to um, sort of d distance myself from, from anything, any group of people, uh, pretty much any other group of people that I could imagine. Um, but I really wanted to, to learn. I wanted to advance my, uh, my academic career. I thought, you know, this is really kind of the next thing for me because I had gone through a lot of math and I wanted to learn calculus and I wanted to learn, uh, you know, electromechanics. I wanted to learn programming. I wanted to learn all these things in, in that environment. And, you know, it seemed like the, the right thing to do. It seemed like the next thing. But at the same time, people were telling me, you know, what are you, you know, what are you going to do for for dating? Like, and I was nine. I was like, I don't care about dating. What, what are you talking about? I'm 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 sure it'll all work out fine. Um, and so I so I went for it. Um, and you know, everyone thought it was kind of crazy, but the college was willing to let me in, and so that was kind of the uh, the gold standard of like, well. I guess it must be okay. Um, you know, the college was the one that was right near my home, and it just turned out by coincidence to be a college that was interested in getting younger students, which to them meant like 15, but, uh, you know, nine-year-old would be fantastic. Uh, and so they, they did, they admitted me, and I went. Uh, how much input did you have in, your, in that decision? I mean, typically nine-year-olds don't make big decisions <laughs> on your own, but you are no regular nine-year-old. So. Yeah, it was... Um, it was up to me. Uh, so, well, there's a story of, of how this even began, which is that a lot of my mom's friends and family were uh, were sort of ragging on her about keeping me at home and homeschooling and saying, you know, he really needs to be in a university environment. He should be doing research. One of them said that I should be in graduate school. And so it was just sort of getting to the point where she was fed up with it. She was like, he's eight. What, what are you talking about? Um, and so she thought of, an, of a plan to shut them all up. She would write a letter to the nearest university, and she would describe the situation, and she would get a letter back from the university saying, sounds great. Come back come in back, nine come years. Come back in nine years, exactly. <laughs> he, you know, he can't go to college. It just doesn't make sense. And then she would take this letter, and she would show it to her friends and family and say, look, you're crazy. It's not possible. You can't put an eight-year-old in college. Well, the university wrote back and said, sounds great, bring him in for an interview, <laughs> and we'll see what we can do for him. And so, you know, she, she then had this sort of crisis. She was like, oh, no, that's not what I expected. What do I do? Do we tell him about this? And she had this kind of emergency conference with, with my dad. Is like, we got this, you know, I screwed up here. I sent this letter. I didn't think it through. We got this letter back, you know. Do we tell him about it? Because if we tell him about it, he's going to do it. And then what? Like, it would, she, it would, she knew you were she, going to say knew, yes? She knew I would do it because I had... Actually, I wanted to go to college when I was six, um, and everyone laughed at me <laughs> at that time. Um, but you know, now here was this letter, and what are we, what are we going to do about this? And uh, you know, eventually they decided, well, we can't, we can't keep it a secret. You know, he'll find out someday, and who knows what will happen then. So we better tell him and see what he says. And so they, they told me about it, and I, I thought about it for a bit, and but it was pretty, it was pretty pretty clear to me that that would be the right thing to do it would you know at least to go in for the interview and then of course I went in for the interview and then they matched me with a professor and um, and then I turned I turned nine over the summer and then I started taking classes in, in that fall and what were the risks that you were concerned about I was concerned mostly for for my own social well-being hmm. um, you know I was concerned that I wouldn't be well accepted there you know as being half of everyone's age, that people would be jealous or they would be upset 
um, and that you know I would have a hard time making friends and that I would be sort of an, an outcast there. Um, but it turned out that I, I wasn't at all an outcast there. It was just sort of that uh, I became, as time went on, you know, it became more and more challenging uh, because I've, you know, now I'm the age of someone who would be in college and I'm on a college campus, but I'm a graduate student. Uh, and it's just, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's coming back in that sense as being a little bit awkward. But I think as time goes forward, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to be doing things that 30 year olds do. Uh, and I think it, it will wind up being all for the best in the end. Yeah, and, and it will definitely, definitely will come a point where you are no longer the youngest kid around. Right. I mean, yeah, and and I'm, I'm well nineteen now, and so it's yeah, it's getting there. Okay, and uh, what are the biggest challenges that you face these days? The biggest challenges I face are sort of deciding what to spend my time on. What what projects do I work on? Um, and it's, you know, I'm in graduate school and I've, uh, I did my, my master's thesis on one thing and then I decided last year to change to uh, a, different, uh, an a different advisor and now I'm thinking about changing again after Singularity University. Uh, I, you know, I'm really now excited about doing science. I want to do this uh, neurobiology project and understanding a, a 302 neuron nervous system. Don't want to get into the details of it, but I... Uh, I find it really um, more, more, more than anything else. You know, this is this is what's going to influence most of uh, my both my time for the next few years, and it will also influence the patterns of connections that I have and uh, what I come out of graduate school with and where I go after that. Um, and so that really, at the same time, makes me excited and really nervous. Do you take time to think? I mean, what you will be doing in. 10, 15 years from now? I try to, but it's, it's, it's hard to have any, any good picture of that. I mean, especially with how young I am and how, how much I will probably change in the next 10 years. What I will want to do then is probably different from what I would expect now. It's truly difficult to project exponentials. Yes, it certainly <laughs> is. And uh, if uh, Aubrey the Great happens to be at least partly true and you end up living, whatever, I mean, 250 years at this pace, what do you expect to do? <laughs> uh, well, I expect to make a name for myself with that much time. I think I would, uh, what I would like to do in my life is to create an environment for really interesting people to do really interesting work. Um, I, I found a lot of people sort of have these ideas but don't have the cover they need to go for it. Um, either you're in an academic environment where you need to pander to the sort of mainstream academic currents in order to get funding from grant sources, or you're in, in, a, in, in a corporate environment where you need to have something that will be productizable in at least five years or something. And so I'd like to create a place for people to do basic research, uh, a Bell Labs for the future. Okay. Excellent. One final question out of context, but since we're ending SU, sure. what is your balance of, of SU now that we're almost done? My what? Uh, your balance of SU. What do you mean by balance? Like your, your evaluation, I mean, you. Okay. I think SU is fantastic. Um, it wasn't exactly what I expected. I expected to basically have a, you know, Fi equivalent of like five degree programs in bio and chemistry and all this stuff squeezed into a summer. There was a lot of lecturing, but it wasn't as detailed as I was expecting. But, but it really doesn't matter because what I came here for, it wasn't about the lectures. It was about meeting fantastic people, and that I certainly did. Okay, thank you very much. It was so interesting. Thank you. Thank you.